Yeah, that's such an interesting perspective. You, you know, that must be on the 20 or mm -hmm. 30th floor of one of these high rises. Again, speaking just to the number of people impacted by this developing situation, this breaking news as, as they're watching many floors below them, everything unfolding as they've been getting notices to stay in their apartments or condos or places of business. And we appreciate people sending their perspective as they can do that safely. We know there are also a lot of tips and information coming into Atlanta police right now. I want to send it now uh, on the phone. We have State Senator Josh McLaurin, who was in a restaurant, I understand, in Midtown. Senator, uh, can you share with us your experience, what you saw, and the information you've been getting since? Sure. Hi. Yes, I was just uh, at a restaurant around the 1100, 1200 block of West Peachtree with a friend catching up, and uh, somebody told us, hey, we're on lockdown now because there's an active shooter in the area. So we've been here for, you know, got to be about an hour, but uh, we've, we've got a bunch of police parked outside. There were fire trucks. We saw the SWAT team uh, moving outside briefly for a while and uh, hard to get information, but just really unbelievable to think hundreds, thousands of people in this area, their lives are put on hold. And, you know, I have spouses or friends whose spouses work uh, in the in the medical building itself. And so we're worried about their safety just just so much. Uh, that can unfold so quickly uh, in a short amount of time. So, legislator, I mean, you deal a lot with police issues, with gun violence issues. To find yourself in the middle of a situation like this, which was certainly scary, we're so glad you're okay. I mean, does that impact you on a deeper level as a legislator, do you think? Well, thank you uh, for your concern. I mean, I I'm fine, and thankfully, oh, sorry. Uh, Amber alert on my phone or some kind of alert. Yeah, I guess it's about this situation. But yeah, no, I'm fine. It, it's just, it's frustrating, right? And it's very, very sad and tragic because I think most people agree we shouldn't have to live like this. And, uh, you know, at some point this becomes a policy conversation about how do we keep from living like this? Are we really going to put metal detectors in more doctor's offices? You know, make sure that there are fewer doors for entry and exit? I mean, it, it's crazy to think that we should have to live in some militarized society just to be safe. I don't think people want to live that way. So clearly, you know, I'm in favor of common sense gun measures uh, that and, and mental health support so that situations like this don't happen in the first place. You know, as you're speaking, I'm thinking about the families directly impacted. We have one person who has died in this shooting, four people hurt, uh, thinking of their friends and families, but you make a very important point that, you know, tens of thousands of people's lives at the very least put on hold and in some level of trauma and still in that holding pattern as police still search for this shooter. That, that's right. And the, the level of uncertainty, I mean, just the stress for everybody, the, the active concern. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't mean we don't have to have a school shooting in every school in the country for parents to worry about sending their their kids to school every day. I mean, it affects everybody just because it affects the culture and our, and our sense of fear. So, um, you know, I, I hope that my colleagues at the Capitol are paying attention to this event and all the others that happen. And, and the, honestly, it shouldn't we shouldn't be in a society where a legislator or a governor has to personally be affected by gun violence, as we saw in Tennessee, for there to be action. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we need to have a little more empathy for, for what everybody's going through. And Senator, as someone who is in the middle of, of this lockdown situation, you know, tensions very high. What was the feeling you were getting from people in the middle of that situation? Was it kind of a, you know, a, a palpable fear or was it a resignation to, oh, well, this is happening? You know, I think people have a range of reactions to your point. I mean, some people just want to block it out and have an extra drink while they're sitting down. Other people, you know, are texting, calling everybody they know and making sure that the doors of the restaurant are locked. I, I mean, I, you see a lot of humanity come out. But again, it's a very high cost. It's a price we shouldn't have to pay. Uh, and I just I feel like you say for the families who are affected, today, it's just a tragic thing. One more question for you. We have State Senator Josh McLaurin on the phone now. He'd been in a restaurant in uh, Midtown when this all started to unfold about an hour and 15 minutes ago. We're hearing some evacuations of some buildings, including the Northside uh, Medical Building. For, for you in the restaurant you're in, is, is the mandate to stay where you are, stay put as of now as well? So right before I took this call, I was downstairs. There was an Atlanta police officer who came through and reminded everybody we were still on lockdown. Um, I'm glad to hear that some people are able to be evacuated. We have seen a couple cars and fire trucks leave the area, so I don't know if that means the presence is going to lighten. But again, going back to the point, it's confusion, it's uncertainty, it's fear, and we're just going to wait and see what we're told. State Senator Josh McLaurin on the phone with us. Thank you so much. Please continue to stay safe. We appreciate you taking our call.